Hello, hello. I am Nessa Hanger from the Atlantic Institute of Aromatherapy, and here I've got with me Chris Mack. Hello, and thank you. From Aromatic Harmony, and we're wondering, have you ever experienced an essential oil that has completely changed your life? Chances are yes, but there are lots of ways that we can use essential oils to make incredible transformations in our mental, physical, spiritual, emotional, whatever you want, well-being. And Chris has a very powerful story of how that happened for him in, I dare say, your early days <laughs> of aromatherapy, right? Yes, I'd only taken uh, just a brief introductory course into the whole scope of aromatherapy when uh, when the event, as I refer to it, happened. And just a little background, Chris's wife and mother-in-law also own Aromatic Harmony, and he was brought into aromatherapy mainly because they were opening a business. Exactly. Everybody knows how booming mainstream essential oils are now, and we thought that, well, it might be a really good idea to get in on it. Absolutely. So that brought you to a class with me, if I'm yep. remembering, right? And so in that class, well, let's back up and can you share a little bit about what your perspective on aromatherapy was when you walked into that, cl that class the first day? Well, I knew, I've always kind of had an affinity towards traditional medicine. I always kind of knew that that's maybe where I should spend more attention. Uh, but really, it was just kind of uh, give me enough understanding to know how to help with the business. Right. Um, while we were in that class, however, uh, that's when, through the process of exposure to these oils, we came across the one that you wanted to talk about today. So the one that I wanted to talk about today, I've started to call it a, a trigger oil. And a trigger oil is totally a term I just made up, but it applies to the situation, to Chris's situation, and I have a feeling that it may apply to some of your situations. When you smell, we know that essential oils and that smells in general and memory and emotion are very tightly connected. So when we have a traumatic experience paired with with a scent, that scent or scents like it can evoke that traumatic experience and essentially be a trigger for some people. And so in our class where we are just going over very common essential oils, Chris found one oil that definitely was a trigger. So share with them what oil that was and what happened. Well, the oil that was going around the room at the time was Ylang. And its characteristic, super saturated sweetness um, triggered a memory that I had thought was just something that was done. And that mm -hmm. sweetness uh, brought back a memory of my deployment in Mogadishu, uh, Somalia. And that was a very, it was a very traumatic time. And for the longest, I thought it wasn't really that big of a deal because nothing was really dealt with. Mm -hmm. And I was reminded that nothing was really dealt with when Ylang brought all of those memories forward. And what was the connection, do you know, between Ylang and your memories? The, um, the sweetness of it was very similar to a chemical sweetness that was used uh, over there to suppress all of the other smells of of nasty stuff, and so when we <laughs> when it got me uh, when I smelled the alang, I was a little blindsided by all of this other stuff that kind of I was reminded of. Oh, by the way, all of this happened too. Um, thankfully, I have kind of a resilient will and I was able to kind of arrest what was going on and, and thankfully I was at what was a safe place with Atlantic Institute and was able to kind of start working through that. I remember that moment. I remember I that moment and those of you that have been in classes or teach classes you know you pass something around and you, you kind of just like watch what the room does 
and and more often than not, you can you can tell when when someone is going through a process. I think is the the right way. Yeah, to Yeah, I think it. when I jumped away from the table and <laughs> and took a couple steps back, that was it was a subtle indicator. <laughs> but it was great that you were able at that time to share what you were experiencing. Yeah. They're like, wow, hey, I have totally been brought back to this time in my past, this time that I thought was done, which is also a very common experience yes. for many of us. And so <clears throat> I believe you were able to use Elang to work through that experience or sort of reprogram that memory. So can you share a little bit about you know what what we did in class and then what you did after to help move you through your continue on that process? Well, we all know how smell and memory go together. And I think that the crux of what we did was to know that the constituents in a Lang, uh, as long as they were present, could be identified as what was the trigger, is what we've been calling it. Right. Um, well, I'm not one to back away from a challenge. No, he's not. <laughs> Let that be known. <laughs> so, um, this, uh, six months into uh, herbal Chinese medicine right. understanding with a full time job and running our own business. Mm -hmm. So, um, we, 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 with the help of the other, with the rest of the class, yeah. we came up with a blend that was remindful of um, peaceful progress and a bunch of supportive oils that, mm -hmm. that, that kind of symboled resiliency. And we added ylang, which anyone that's worked with it knows that can be tricky because <laughs> ylang really packs a punch. Yes, it does. <laughs> but... Um, since then, every blend that I've made for myself, I've included Ylang. So that now, instead of instantly recognizing those constituents as a reminder of a threat, I can just recognize the oil for the oil. Nice. That's amazing. So. So, uh, and, and do you know, I don't know the last time you smelled Ylang on its own. Actually, I probably do know the last time you smelled Ylang on its own, and we'll tell you why in just a minute. Um, um, what, what is the experience of smelling Ylang like for you now? Well, it does still carry that memory. It is still associated with all of that. However, it doesn't catch me by surprise. Mm -hmm. And it's now associated with all of the work that I've been doing in aromatherapy since that point. Wow. So I've really made a conscious effort to make sure that that particular essential oil is not a threatening smell or ingredient. Amazing. So what Chris has been able to do is take an oil that he may, I mean, you could have said, no, not my oil. And if you feel like that with an essential oil, that is totally appropriate. You do not have to reprogram or um, work with it in the way that he does. But if you do feel so inclined, please know that you can start to incorporate whatever your trigger oil is in, you know, in small amounts, exactly. in a blend that has all these other things in it and build these greater associations with that oil. And the, the great part is, is you then get to use more oils. Exactly. So now I get the, the, the privilege of yes. using Ylang to complement or contrast different oils because it's such a rich, powerful oil that, I mean, I can't, now, I can't imagine not having that in my toolbox to use. Wow. I think that that is an incredibly powerful story of resilience, like you're talking about, and um, and really a, a testament to, you know, this, this our healing is never done. <laughs> never. <laughs> our healing is never done and so there are so many different ways that we can get at all the stuff that we are carrying around in aromatherapy and scent really have the ability to do that and and allow us to become more empowered in our own healing absolutely and thus be able to help other people just like you are doing now <laughs> you know that's the whole that's the whole idea you can't 
you can't give other people if your cup's empty. So no, you can't. You can't no, share. you can't. And so we got to learn how to fill our own cup. So if you have an oil that is a trigger oil for you, and you do want to work with it, I do. You have any particular tips for um, if people are like, yes, this is my trigger oil, and I want to work with it? Well, I think the the biggest first step is to know. Okay, if you if you happen across an oil and you have this traumatic reaction, how much of that you have to look at it kind of uh, from an oblique perspective? How much of that was the surprise of discovering that okay. oil was like that? Right. And once you eliminate kind of the shock factor of surprise, mm. that enabled me to be able to kind of address it. Well, okay, this is bringing me here. I don't necessarily want to go there, but I'd like to use the oil. Well, once you kind of get to that step, you can start incorporating it in complementary ways into other projects so that your exposure becomes a little more muted to whatever it is triggering. Nice. Awesome. Well, part of why we wanted to bring Chris in and have him share this larger story is that this month in our Inner Sanctum membership, we are exploring Elang in depth. And with that, we include several recipes for our featured oil each month. And as we were thinking about Elang recipes, we thought, oh, <laughs> there's one person that we really need to uh, get to submit a recipe. So for the first time, we have a guest recipe in the Inner Sanctum oh, made yay. by Chris. And he incorporated um, several oils with it that, uh, well, you want to just tell him about the recipe you made? Well, sure. Um, it's strange when you, when you have like, hey, we want to feature this oil. Can you... Let's do a recipe, and it's like the third or fourth oil on the list. Sure. Because it's so strong. It's so potent. Yes. And so um, I put together something that is comprised of oils. Most people, if you've got a ylang, you've probably got the other ingredients. Mm -hmm. uh, nothing really exotic. And, of course, I'm going to do something that now, you know, I can use. Absolutely. So, it's got, uh, it's probably neutral to a little masculine in scent. And that's what we were hoping for too, because Elaine tends to be a floral oil that, um, for whatever reason, speaks to men over the other florals. It goes really well in these sort of like men's cologne blends. However, you know, women like it as well. Yeah. And I think your blend very, very much encapsulates that. And you also mentioned that, you know, it could be used as like a, a base or a, or a starter. Exactly. For a blend that you could even build on and make more complex. Ylang, it goes well with so much. And then having the ability to complement and contrast and then enhance different oils with it is really, really remarkable. Um, bringing sweetness to citrus or mm. contrasting the spice of black pepper. Mm. There's all sorts of... It's a great stuff. So I like to build a, like a master, like a sourdough starter. <laughs> it's almost lunchtime. And then uh, from that, people can add, well, I really like frankincense. So, you know, stuff can go in and take away. But it's a, it's a nice little starter. Well, and on that note, I know that when you're first getting started with essential oils and you, you want to have recipes because you're not sure what mixes well with what. However, every recipe that we create, we always offer variations because who knows, maybe you don't have the oils in there or maybe you don't like some of those oils. So always feel free to switch out whatever you want. And what Chris is giving you here is a big old permission slip to get creative and really build on what you've got going on so that you can create your own unique blend. And I know in using essential oils for um, trauma, anxiety, all the emotional stuff, the, the way they have some of the greatest power is when we pair a unique scent. So the more unique of a blend you can make, almost the better. However, you know, if you're going to go simple, totally go simple. There's no wrong way of doing it. But you, you want something that you're not going to smell anywhere else. So then yes. you can pair that scent with particular feelings of feeling good, feeling supportive. You know, like I'm sure if you were to pull out the blend that we made in class and smell it again, it would probably take you back to that 
that weekend in class. I keep it in my drawer at work. <laughs> it's, no, I, I, I've, re awesome. I've had to remake it a couple times just, yeah. just to do that, but yeah, I keep it. Oh, that's so awesome. Well, I just got to say, it's been wonderful having you as a student, and I'm always inspired by what you've got going on, and thank you for being a part of our community and our family. I wouldn't have it any other way. And so, if you have an oil that is a trigger oil for you and you want to help reframe it, reprogram it in your mind, I want to know what oil is that and how are you going to work with that to make it something that you enjoy. And of course, if you have any questions on how to do that, leave us a comment in the blog down at the bottom. We would love to hear from you. And if you're not on our email list, please subscribe. You will get our Safety First Aromatherapy PDF because you know we all, we like to teach you all about safety. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.